Hello. Sorry. I had to take care of a couple of things. Number one was Wilbur. Um, so, how is everybody? Let me also uh, just fix some settings. It's been a while since I've been live, so I'm really excited to see you. And I thought, you know, how fun it is that we're going to be working together again. I need to get back to my lives. So, before we get into the project, I want to show you a couple of things. I know you want to work, too, but um, I do need to show you these. So our first thing, though, I want to show you that we're going to do today, because not only is this, um, we need to start getting these things made for the holidays, because um, sometimes you don't want to give a lot, right, for Halloween, but you do want to be able to give a nicer gift or in a gift basket, which there is, I, I kind of need this. <laughs> Um, Wilbur, everybody says hi. Well, he's finally settled down. He may be almost four years old. Hi, Nancy, but he still is a very much a puppy at heart. So we're going to create, um, it's also a card. You could put gift cards in here. And I did use the Bewitching Hour, which is currently reprinting. This is the eight by eight. And you could put a gift card in here, a sentiment, or just um, a hello, but we'll have a nice place can actually put a bigger candy bar you know those boxes of candy so I made it bigger for that reason there was two in here and one got eaten <laughs> so you can put two good size candy bars in there you could put uh, the box the movie time boxes and hi Rhonda all kinds of fun things so we are going to create this it's not difficult I'll be using some seam binding and I'm using the new Bewitching Hour. But I want to show you just a couple of things really quick. Because I had a lot of requests. This is an extremely old album. And it, I mean, it's really, really old. Uh, I had a request to remake this. And so we're going to be starting this tutorial next week. But I want to show you, I did some things a little different, but it'll be similar. I took it down to 7 by 7 And I am using the Bewitching Hour on it because i really really loved i love this and i'm going to have a dome here which we have in stock now with some shakers inside of it and so it's not finished but i did take the size down and i did a few changes in here and so i want to show you this is the smaller size so i took it down a couple of inches that way you can use your eight by eight paper pad but and I did remove this off the front and put it on the inside cover. And I'll show you so you can put it either way. And we're going to start this next week. Like I said, this was very old. This is back when, um, what is this company called? October Afternoon was in business. Absolutely loved them. I wish they had never left. And of course, I needed to take the size down. I need to turn the volume off my phone, but that was good news. We've got some art glitter glue shipping. As everyone, um, if you follow Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, art glitter glue has, their machines are broken. They're having to fill bottles. So we are having to wait, but we're getting some more glue in. So we are going to create this. And I, I do want to show you the finish because I'm going to have a lot of requests saying, okay, can we see what it looks like made? But I won't have it completely made. See, and that's made to sit. And this was back when the hinges were a quarter of an inch. Not, not big enough at all. So this is what we're going to be creating. I won't go through all of it so we can start today's tutorial. We'll be creating this and all the centers open. Um, mine won't have this because this is a Christmas tree. I'm going to do a Halloween. And I will eventually, though, we'll show you how to make one of these. Super simple. All hand cut. You didn't know, don't even need a machine. But, oh, my gosh, I made this like eight years ago. It's been around and it's been handled a lot, as you can see. And it was with score tape. Uh, it was before our glitter glue, so things are coming apart. And I now use our glitter glue. But that's what we're going to remake. Oh, but the size different. So, see, I did take it down just a little bit, not a lot. But I wanted to be able to use my 8x8 paper pad. Yes, it could be a pumpkin for sure. 
and that would be absolutely adorable. So that's what we're going to start on next Thursday. And I am getting back into doing the live tutorials now that things are kind of settling down. But one more thing to show you. I just have so much to show you. Um, I'm going to show you this only because I have the samples, but it's not, it's having to reprint this um, printed to pink. This is the eight by eight. It should be available in about two weeks. And this is Santa's little helper. Now, the beauty of my paper collections is, number one, um, you get three sheets of each design, two of the cut aparts or tags or whatever's been created with it. And you can also use this as for stamping. It's just beautiful um, vellum paper. So the, the Santa's little helper, like I said, comes 12 by 12 or 8 by 8. Now, the one thing that um, we worked on was that we have some pets, we have some baking, we have some very, you know, things that to me are very dear to my heart at Christmas, of course, are pets, baking, neighbors, but the tags are going to be used on gifts. So I can cut these tags, either put it on doggy treats, because I do send out doggy treats to our doggy friends, or if I'm going to put something on the neighbor's porch, but you can see we've got kind of a pink tint going here. So um, we're having to, the printer had to recalibrate. And again, if you aren't the pet lover, the back sides were created for that winter baking scene. So you don't have to use those front sides. And here on the um, on the eight by eight, these become two by two. And on the 12 by 12, they're three by three. Again, you have a good variety. We've got the toy shop, we have the Claus Bakery. We have, if you're gonna do a hot cocoa bar, maybe you're having the doggies over to celebrate Christmas, which, you know, pets are such a big part of our life now. And I know, I'm sorry, there are no kitties in here. <laughs> but you do have two sheets. Again, the back sides are gonna coordinate beautifully so that if you are not a front side lover, that's okay. Now, I need to explain why these are so big. I went big with the 12 by 12s and 8 by 8s because these, what a gift is that to give it in a frame. Decorate your frame. Get yourself some greenery. We're going to be doing some things like that. I really, I know how hard this can be used, hard to use in a project. You're going to be seeing how to use it though. But um, again, wouldn't this be just gorgeous to put in the corner in your kitchen? Then we've got the candy stripes again that coordinate so great. You're going to love how the back just all coordinates in, um, in this collection. Then we have for our pet lover, of course, Santa's little helper. Again, we've got the back side. Yes, it says Santa's little helper, but that can be um, our little helpers in the kitchen. It doesn't have to pertain to our pets. So very versatile. And again, if you're making gifts, oh my goodness, can you imagine what the design team's going to do with this? So you've got some beautiful boxes that are going to be being made. Again, we have the shadowing of the kitchen eggs, different things, but you can see the pink tint. So we're fixing that. One of my favorites is the rolling pin. Again, beautiful box. This could be the lid coming over and then you put your handmade baked items in there. So we've got the greens, um, official cookie taster. And it is different from this one. This is official cookie taster. This one says Santa's helper. And of course, the back is different. Again, no pets. No pets. Okay, so we have the hot chocolate because this is going to be, again, in a frame. You can do the 12 by 12. You can do the 8 by 8 for your hot cocoa bar. How cute is that? Then you can put it in the frame and decorate your frame and have it sitting there at your coffee bar. Then we've got our baking. Again, it's not going to be this vibe. It, it's too pink. You can see it in the camera. And let me remove this banner because I am here. <laughs> um, again, the back side is going to be for your baking. Then we have some toy shop. 
which again will also go with the baking so yes there's going to be a recipe book for christmas hi peggy how are you and we have just kind of the shadowing we have taken off the toy shop and the presents so again this you're going to love the feel of this also for um junk journals oh my gosh so our last one is now on your eight by eight again these are cut down to four by four so you have smaller these are going to be beautiful cards and on the 12 by 12, they're six by six. Hi, Michelle. So you've got either six by six or four by four. So you're going to want both sizes of this paper. You're going to want the 12 by 12 and the eight by eight. And like I said, in about two weeks, it'll be ready. And again, we have more baking on the back side. So your back sides took on just a total personality of their own, as you can see, that are, that are not pet related. So anything that you want to make that you don't want pet related you just turn it over to the b side so you've got so many uses here on this b side you're going to get so many many um projects out of this um nicole this one is called santa's little helper it will be available in about two weeks we are printing we had to reprint it's not it's really pink you can see and yeah, because, you know, designing it and, and knowing that it's just too pink with my graphic um, artist people, we definitely needed to reprint this. But again, here's your back sides. You don't even have to use the front sides. The backs are so gorgeous. And they're going to make so many great Christmas gifts. Okay, I know that's not what you came for. But I haven't seen you in so long, so it's so great to be here. And eventually, we're setting up a new part of the studio. We've got a beautiful backdrop painted, and I can't wait to start using that because I'll have the two cameras going. I'll be more live, more personable with you. But we are going to make our candy bar holder. And I did grab some of the Prima, which are in stock. We've got the Prima Halloween flowers. I'm going to be using, instead of the pumpkins... I'm going to use the candy corn papers on the next one. And it's so easy to make. All you need is two sheets of cardstock. <coughs> Let me move that. I'm going to cut everything with you. I thought I, I, I was at first going to have everything pre-cut. And I decided I haven't worked with you guys in so long. I just want to work with you from start to finish. I really have missed you. And then again with the... Um, bewitching hour it is printing so we're getting that printed we're just going along as fast as we can okay let's cut our first sheet of paper seven and three quarters by eight and a half i'm just going to use my small cutter here so seven and three quarters and eight and a half you okay if you're using one of my collections an eight by eight size you're going to get, there's 30 sheets of paper. You're going to be able to get about 15 of these out of one pack of paper because I put the three sheets in. Who wants to buy more than, you know, than one pack of paper when you can get it with three sheets in there? So our second piece is going to be four and a half. And the measurements are at the beginning of the video. And it'll be on the comments. So four and a half by nine and a half. Four and a half by nine and a half. Seven and three quarters by eight and a half. So let's go ahead and score. We just have these two pieces to score. You're going to want some seam binding or ribbon for your closure. I'm just going to use some black seam binding on this next one. And that's not quite eight and a half. So, hold on. So I, use, I do like to use my bigger cutter. I'm just going to recut that on my bigger cutter because it's not quite eight and a half. And you need an eight and a half. I should have pre-cut it. 
All right. But my big cutter is too big to put in the video. Okay, I'm going to move this guy and use him for something else later. And let's go ahead and score our first piece. You want the eight and a half across the top. And we're going to score it at four and four and a half. And that's that. Super simple. But how cute. It's so much. I like it better to give the gift of a candy bar. Oh, and we can also wrap that candy bar. We're going to do that also. Okay, four and a half by nine and a half this is the pocket that will hold your candy right here so it's kind of like a wallet we're going to score at one half and one on three sides so we're going to score this these two short sides and the one long side I'm going to turn it to the four and a half inch side and let's score at one half and one And again, with the nine and a half across the top, we're going to score it one half and one. That's it. You can get these out for the kids. I know because our kids in school, um, you might want to do it for the teachers. Definitely, you know, have, and the kids can help with these. All right. Move the cardstock. Let's grab our scissors. These are the new, it's a different brand. It, it's the non-stick. But I want my regular ones. And like I said, I just kind of didn't have everything out. <laughs> um, the Halloween paper is on the website, Heather. But it is being printed, so it will say um, say that it's printing for and it's you know pre-order. Because it is my own line, I just reprint and it's local. I don't go overseas to source my printing. But it takes us about seven days. But it's on there, so you can go ahead and order uh, the Bewitching Hour, and it's so adorable. And there's also Midnight Ride. I was gonna, I couldn't decide which one to use. But I went with Bewitching Hour. Now, right now, I'm just going to burnish up our score lines. The one half and the one. Hi, Beth. And I do have to show you something at the end also, speaking of Beth. Um, and I'll just explain that at the end. So let's just burnish all those score lines. All we're going to do is we need to cut out these three. We need to cut out the two there and this one. Okay, because that inner, haven't, if you haven't, I, I know I haven't made boxes in a long time. Hi, Rosetta. Then we just need this tab. This is going to connect our box together. Okay. And just this outer one, I like to angle. I don't do both of them. Just this one. So it sits nicely on the inside. Then I want to just go straight. I'm going to angle. Then we're going to cut the bottom off. I am going to angle it just on the inside of the score line. And let's go ahead and just angle that. Not a lot. Then I'm going to do the same here. On my tab and straight up you don't want to angle this piece now see this is going to fold over and create our box let's do that again 
So first I want to cut out these two outside pieces. Angle that in just a hair. We're going to cut that off and I did angle it as I was doing it. Now, see this one I took straight in from here. If you accidentally took it across here, that's okay too. But I want these two to match. So I'm going to go straight up here. Just angle that a little bit. Angle this outside. I don't know how I got that at such a weird angle. It doesn't matter whether you cut straight up here or straight across there. Just, of course, don't cut it off because it's going to attach the same way. And then before I put my box together on the inside piece here, we are going to mat this first. And our matting is 7 and 3 eighths by 3 and 5 or 3 and 3 eighths. And then I noticed when I have this folded over, I've got a little bit sticking out here. So just clean it up so it's nice and straight. So when you fold this in, you'll see if you have any little pieces you need to trim off, just trim them off. Because when you make boxes, you want to keep that line straight. You can angle it at the end, but keep it straight. That's what's going to make your box square is that straight line so let's pick out like i mentioned i think i want to go candy corn on this one we do have the six by sixes here which make adorable cards candy holders hi rena and oh this one we're going to put this on the outside this is going to go on the front to put the candy corn on the inside and then i just took like i'll take the half of this for the inside and the pumpkins will be out here on the outside candy corn on the inside so i've also got some of this one left to use the back side of the gold glitter so that's what i'm going to use and again, we're going to cut seven. Whoops, let me give you your inside pieces. Seven and three eight long. So watch your directional. And three and three eighths wide. So I want to cut my three and three eighths wide first. And. seven and three-eighths long. I'm going to hang on to that. I didn't ink. You can ink if you want, but where these are, I consider these cards. And you know, sometimes cards don't make it to, they kind of make it to the garbage bin, unfortunately. that I hate to say that. I keep almost everything, but again, this would be something I would keep. And you could even repurpose it, reuse it, give it. If you're giving it to someone, they could definitely re-gift it um, with a new candy bar in there. So, but inking the edges, I usually don't do on, on cards unless it's a wedding card or something more um, along those lines. But that is up to you. I would definitely use a black or a, a brown on this one. And again, this is a lot easier if you mat it flat before you make the box. You know, another one that would be really cute on this cover with Midnight Ride is the witches. Yes. Okay. I'm going to grab a couple of clothespins. Oh, it feels so good to be back to creating. I've only been doing like graphics and 
other things. So this is really, I'm really glad to be making things. So I want to go ahead and really burnish this is the box. So we need it square. And I'm using the artisan cardstock. So I know I'm fine and I'm, I am going pretty hard on this because you want it square. Okay, so our tab then is what's going to connect our box together. Uh, we've got some outside um, watering. Sorry about if you hear any noise. Yes, this is going to be so cute for the holidays, Annette. Absolutely. And again, gift baskets, gift bags. You might have just you want to put it on somebody's doorstep fun things like that. So we are going to hold this for a minute. And then I'm going to repeat on this one. So let's go ahead and poke it in. And if it's a little stiff, go ahead and burnish, burnish that. <coughs> Excuse me. Headed to the store after this for my Zyrtec. Allergy season hits me in the fall. Hi, Diane. How are you? It's so good to see everybody's names popping up. I really have missed you guys. But we're going to change that. It's been busy. My husband had surgery on his shoulder, but he's actually doing good. It's kind of been a hell of a year. I'm hoping that... Um, Next year starts out, I mean, it's been a good year. I can't complain, but it's, there's been a lot happen that, wow, I don't want to relive. <laughs> How about you guys? Okay, now see, that is the reason that I angled just this bottom piece. Because you want it to fit nicely. You don't want to angle it a lot. But you want it to fit inside where it's not sticking on the sides. And then I did not, I did not map these. You certainly can. You would cut your pieces at three eighths of an inch if you wanted to. Again, I'm not because these don't always, these aren't always, you know, the crafting project that people keep. I hate to say that. Like I said, I'm the type I do. They're everywhere. <laughs> I love what people make for me. Okay, so we're going to add the adhesive. We're just going to put our glue there. And then just check that everything's squared while it's a little bit wet. Okay, we can let that dry. We've already done the scoring for the booklet part or the wallet part. Hi, Cindy. Good Thursday to you, too. Now, you can do decorative punches. You can make um, a fun border on this. And you know what? You know, I think I have... Let's see something if I do have that fiber left. I used to have a fiber web. No, it's okay. I'll take it. Um, border punches, you can go along this edge. Hi, Judy. You can go along this edge with a border punch. Okay, again, make sure we get those down there. I just took my corner rounder to the outside front cover. We are going to mat this completely before we add our box. So I'm going to grab some seam binding. I'm just going to use a black seam binding this time to tie it closed. And so I used about 32 inches. It's too much. I can tell you that now, but you only need about 12 inches, 24 inches, 12 inches on the front and 12 on the back. I am going to just kind of mark my center. You don't have to match if you don't want, I mean, mark if you don't want, I just want a, a basic eyeball. Hi D as to where to put my ribbon. For that, I'll just add a piece of seam binding, and we'll add it to the 
back kind of in the same area. And what is fun? Hi, Christine. These are quick. And they're fun. I did not round these corners. You can on the back. But we do need to mat it before we put the box on. Okay. So there's our front and our back. And this one I just had. Yeah, I had this left over from a past kit. So look in your stash for the ribbons. Now, so that I keep it. And there goes Wilbur. <laughs> so that it, I can tell that it's kind of the same. That way, so you can line them up pretty good. This is too long. Like, you only need the 12 inches on each side. It's about 24 inches. And then I'll tie knots at the end here to keep it from unraveling in just a minute. But let's go ahead and let's do the matting. And each side is the same. Each side is going to be four inches wide. And they are seven. So it's three and seven eighths by seven and five eighths. And we do want to watch. We've got to watch the directional. I'm going, like I said, I'm going to use these two pieces and the, the sizes are all the same. So I'm going to cut first at three and seven eighths. And then I will cut this at three and seven eighths. And then we're going to cut it to seven and five eighths. So that's one thing I'm going to check here because I don't want to cut my ghost off. So I'm going to just take a little bit off before his hand and then turn it. There we go. So I didn't take too much of one side. And the pumpkins, I'll kind of do that same. I'm just going to take an eighth off to start. And then seven and five eighths. So let's go whoops, seven and three fourths. I'm trying to keep my pumpkin kind of symmetrical. There we go. Now, those are, you can also fussy cut those out if you want to. So we're going to start with these two pieces. And then we're going to decide. Do we want our pumpkin? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I want the pumpkins on the outside. Or do we want the ghost on the outside? Pretty cute. You can go either way. But I'm going to go with my my pumpkins on the outside. So I want to round his corner. Hi, RJ. Again, if you want to ink your edges, now's the time. Now, when I flip this over, that's what you want to look for. Directional. And the ghost on the inside. And then I did the faux pockets. We'll make that in a moment. You're trying to find your craft room? Have you been digging your craft room apart, Bonnie? I know I need to do that. It's time to get out some more scrap boxes. So I just have the eighth of an inch border all the way around. I want to show you something really cool here. If you, some people like to do an eighth of an inch. Some like to do a fourth of an inch. Hello, Lillian. And so, and you know what? 
Some of you use a smaller scoreboard. I'm going to show you something really cool. So these are coming. Um, you know our acrylic spacers? These are made for our smaller, the smaller scoreboard, if you've got a smaller one. So I want to show you something. And we use these in um, a little event I did up in Washington that if you are one that doesn't know or doesn't like, let me show you this. Um, we're, I'm on the fence. We even, they were even cut at eighth of an inch. Look at this. Look at this. I got to show you guys this. All you have to do then is put down your paper with your eighth of an inch spacer and you know exactly where to put it. Those are kind of small, but maybe you're a quarter of an inch crafter and you want your quarter of an inch perfect all the way around. All you have to do is lay down your quarter of an inch spacers and down they go. Look at that. You would have your perfect spacing. So these are coming soon and they're going to be great for your smaller projects and your smaller scoreboard. If you're not familiar with what these are, these are um, the spacers that you'll see almost our whole design team uses to create our albums in perfect spacing. But we're cutting them. Uh, Beth will be cutting them in quarter, half, and three-eighths, I believe. I can't remember exactly what we... But we'll get more sizes as they become more needed. But how perfect is this? They don't bend. They're perfect in your scoreboards. You're going to want them. I know. I Cindy, hello. Cindy, I hope you're doing better. Now, the smaller spacers aren't available yet. They're being cut. And then I'll do a whole demonstration in the small Scorpel board. And I see so many of you that have joined also in the virtual retreats. So I do want to let you guys know something. Um, many of you may have known her from the virtual retreats. Her name is Tricia Greco. Um, also just a dear friend of, of Sally's. And like I said, she's been in our Zoom. She's been on our uh, virtual retreat um, and she passed away. So if you could be um, praying for her family, there's a new grandbaby due the very first one in two weeks. But Tricia... Um, she had a heart problem. It wasn't, it wasn't COVID. Um, and her heart wasn't strong enough. So they, so she passed away. So please be thinking of her family, be thinking of Sally, be thinking just of all of us. Um, you just never know what can happen. Okay. Back to our project three and seven eighths by seven and five eighths. It is. It was uh, very unexpected and very, it just happened. And yeah, her family needs lots of prayers right now, especially those daughters. One just graduated high school last year and one is having her first baby in two weeks. And now her husband's on his own. Yeah, a lot of us knew her. Okay, let's put those glittery gold specks on the back. And then I'm going to do, oh, I got glue there. I'm going to do that. Well, I, I, that definitely is a beautiful thought, but because this was such a shock right now, Cheryl, I'm just kind of 
I just am holding back on everything until, I mean, it's very traumatic. Her name is Tricia Graco, G-R. Yeah, she's in the group. Well, her name is in the group. She's in the group with us. Tricia Graco. Okay. Again, we need to cut a piece that is seven and five eighths. And let me look through here. I know I used this one. Or we can use so many to use. The wood grain. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and cut into oh. You know what I'm going to do because I don't want to cut into that. This was what I used on the other one. <coughs> and there are two sheets of your cut apart. So I'm going to use this for the inside and outside. Well, once again, oops, we're kind of stuck. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this down because I know I'm going to use it. I'm making a few more of these. And I'm going to cut two pieces at seven and three eighths. You could also do that outside of your box, like I mentioned. I'm glad you're doing doing good, though, Cindy. Yes, tired. That's you know sometimes that's no fun either. But you're here, and I'm so happy to see you. You know, you've had a rough couple of months not feeling well. That's what I mentioned. Um, next year is going to just be, hopefully, a wonderful year. And the rest of this year. For everybody. Hi, Linda. How are you? And how is Pumpers? So that's going to be the top part. Isn't that cute? What a cute gift, huh? And I'm going to add it here also, my second piece. And then I'm going to mat the bottom before we add our box. You know, it's amazing that through just videos, Facebook, we we know our we know the names, right? We may not have met everybody in person. Hello, Miss C. That we notice when one of us is gone, and I say one of us because we are an us, um, and we just think of each other so much. And here it is, all brought about by virtual. And sometimes this is the best friends that an old lady could have, right? <laughs> I mean, we look forward to being together, even though I'm the one talking and you're not. But um, it means so much that we're all here and we do think of each other when we're missing or ill. It's kind of nice to know that we have such a support system through crafting. So three and seven eighths, and again, seven and five eighths. And I do mat this before I put the box because the box is just a little bit shorter. And I'm going to use the blue, even though, oh, I hate to cut that. Maybe the wood grain again. Let's go wood grain. I just, I can't cut that. <laughs> I do too. I love this group. Too, and I know that when we just check in and say how we're doing, it means so much. And I can't wait to go down to Arizona this winter and see some of you that are headed that way, Miss C. I can't wait till we can get something put together for a to craft together. <laughs> yeah, we're not old. I Ginger is, I don't know, I've just been going by what her stepdaughter and I haven't had any more news. And so, yeah, be praying for Ginger. 
Ginger, uh, my sister Scrapper. She's a nice you, but she's going to do fine. She's going to come out of this. Um, she's going to do great. Her body's just needing to heal. Hi, Sharon. How are you? Yeah, Serena, scrapbook friends are the best. Because it doesn't matter how we show up, how we look, <laughs> what we're wearing, what we're talking about. We're all there for each other. <gasps> I'm getting ready to do a masquerade Halloween book. That really sounds neat. Yes, Tanya has been very busy. So many have been sick. But you, yes, COVID. Yes, Ginger does have COVID. But um they did sedate her and intubate her you know um anxiety is a big part of being in the hospital by herself and so definitely pray for her but she hopefully is at the end of it and we're gonna have some good news any day that she's doing great okay this is your candy holder again you can see now that it's just a little bit um smaller than the actual box so again, that's where this little eight, so I don't know, you know, we need to go back and probably cut the eighth of an inch. These are precision cut pieces of the acrylic spacers. And uh, Beth went smaller because she found that using them, it, yes, CCC is not just CCC. It is a team, absolutely, of crafters, behind the scene workers, um, so much happens here that a lot of it, you know, nobody knows <laughs> what goes on. So I'm going to use my scoreboard, though. It does help me. And I'm going to have about a sixteenth of an inch at the bottom. I'm not putting it right at the bottom because I want it to sit on the inside just a hair. Okay, move it up. There we go with the glue. Now, you do want to get in there with your bone folder. If you have a spatula, especially along the bottom. Oh, isn't fall weather the best, Sharon? Ah, whoops. Don't pull it up too soon. Get those sides down first. Use that flat end of the bone folder. Take your time because you need it to you need it to be stuck down, and you can look down there and see and make sure it is. No, cold weather is pretty painful on some bodies. I know my husband's shoulder, but he's doing so good. But the cold weather, oh Heather, I know. But this is my favorite season i wish it could be fall six months out of the year three months summer and three months spring i'd be so happy i do i kind of like winter maybe two months winter two months summer and then two months spring and the rest fall okay mine is pretty secure i'm looking at the half inch down there in the bottom which you can't see but i need it secure to hold my candy bars we're going to do some decorating then also I like when I'm using seam binding, I want to make a knot up here by the paper so that when you pull up, it doesn't tear it. And I am going to, seam binding makes it, I only do this with seam binding. Keep your knot loose so you can bring it up. You can even put a cute little charm there. There we go. Hold it. Now I've got a knot there. And I'm going to knot the bottom. Um, I could go with that, Teresa. Yeah. You know, our summer in Utah was just too hot this year. Okay. But we do live in the desert in Utah, so I can't complain. What am I saying here? Okay, I'm going to do the same with the back. You don't have to do this. So 
I'll make that knot so it's right there by the paper. And now, see how that's unraveling? But I made the knot, so now I won't have raveling there. Okay. So, you're making lasagna. So now I know my candy bar will fit more than one candy bar. And that's what I wanted. Because giving it as a gift, I want more than a candy bar. And this one is kind of small. So I'll be getting some of the nice, bigger Cadbury's and things like that to put in here. But let's, um, I still want to make this pocket that goes across. And I just used the cardstock that we had left. And it's one and a half inches. Or you can just make a pocket if you wanted to put a gift card in there. But I'm going to cut this one and a half by seven and a half. I think we should all go to her house for dinner, Cindy. <laughs> and then see. Seven and a half on my big cutter. And using my scraps, I had this piece left over. And see, this is going to sit side to side. Um, I made this one shorter so that it was sitting on the inside of the matting to match this. Or you can take it clear to the edges if you want. But... This is big enough for sentiment, a gift card. Oh, two coconut cream pies. Those are my favorite, Linda. I need to go upstairs after anyway and bake that. I've got an apple pie to bake for my husband. Now that he's retired, he expects me to feed him. <laughs> I don't I don't quite have um, the free time. Like when he went to work, because my free time was all taken up, too, in crafting. But we're getting a routine. We're getting a routine. Um, so I've got this piece. I also have this piece. Okay, we'll go with this one. I haven't really crafted with anybody either in a long time, so this feels so great. Um, I'm going to cut it one and three-eighths. There we go. Exactly what I didn't want it to do was move. And seven and three eighths long. So I'm going to use my big cutter. Yeah, we're kind of on our own for lunch too. And then I do, you know, I should be doing dinner. All I want to do is craft now that fall is here. Um, I don't know what it is about fall. I want to cook. I want to craft. I don't even mind cleaning as much. Because you know what? We don't have quite the yard work either that has to be done. My great aunt taught me how to make pies. And I love to make pies. Now, I'm just going to borrow these. These are from the cut aparts, the Happy Halloween and the Witching Hour. Let's just put that in there. And then I've got these ones left from my cut aparts. And you also have in this collection, I have those left. Um, you have this sheet. Now, I did use the back because that's what I mat did for the matting. I double matted this for my project that we're going to start next week. But I still have a lot of cute things here to use. I did cut off some of those. But I'm going to do the spine tingling time. Um, Mary Jo, this is called Bewitching Hour. And it is on the website, but it is currently reprinting. So I will have it any day now. I'm just waiting for the printer to call. Um, it is printing And it's just adorable. Okay, I'm going to cut. It says fine tingling time. 
And if you scroll up in the comments, Tanya did post a link. It comes 12 by 12 and it comes 8 by 8 and it is created. It's, it's for Country Craft Creations. It's our own collections. So, spine tingling time. These are also nice to cut and if you back them with chipboard. Foam tape, you can pop them up on here. Again, I'm not. Now, I've got um, a lot of cute things that I've already cut. But one thing that I wanted to do was to add... So I used a scallop punch, which I put away, and the scallop punch is that decorative piece right there, and I already have a piece of it left. So I'm going to grab it here. That's a pretty cute one. Broom rides. I had everything nicely stacked here on my craft table so I wouldn't lose it. And I didn't lose it. <laughs> so, kind of adds just a little extra there. So we have broom rides. Of course, you got to decorate it, right? We've got trick or treat that might meld in too much, but that's a really cute little cut apart. A haunting we will go, but I'm going to go with the broom rides. And this eight by eight is such a nice size for smaller projects like this. Because you don't want your cut aparts to be too big. And on the 12 by 12, of course, they're larger. So again, I just cut that with a scalloped round punch, this. And then you can cut it in half however you want to use it. Just to add a little dimension, a little layering there. And then this little ghost and goblins is from the cut apart. But because I've already used it and I did use the plaid on the back, so I'm just going to choose to use another one. And we have two, I have two different. So if you're using Midnight Ride, the cut aparts are different. And I've got some really good news. We had a die made. So we will be on the new collections that are retro like your um midnight ride bountiful blessings those collections that's a little bit different format that my illustrator uses so we have made a die for that and it will be cutting those images out for you you're not going to have to fussy cut them but fussy cutting is kind of relaxing to be honest with you I like it. I realize, and some of these can be cut with your one inch circles. So get those out. You're going to want to use them. And I'm just going to cut out my spooks and kooks here my October 31st just to add a little bit of fun to the candy box yeah as you get better well the secret to fussy cutting because I can't walk a straight line nor can I cut a straight line <laughs> is the cutter bee scissors that we have in stock um, once I started using those I tried the Tim Holtz I tried everything they're not made for fussy cutting for me. Maybe they work for you, but these work. And again, you might want to just leave this plain. You could put white cardstock, add some pictures, Halloween pictures, if you're doing this for grandma, aunts, uncles. Otherwise, stick your gift card, stick your 
Here, let's stick our candy bar in there. Now that knot, see what that knot does is it stops it from going in and tearing your paper. That's why I made that knot there. Love the seam binding, not expensive. It's so easy um, to manipulate. Now here I just used a Halloween cut apart. Here um, I was gonna use my flowers. The graphic, uh, I mean graphic, sorry, the Prima. So let's see how they're going to look. Definitely just want to take out some of the black ones. I don't, oh, the orange ones will go. Let's see what we have here. Really wanted to add some flowers. On this one because it's kind of a, what I'm planning on using it for. It needs a little more. Um, of some flowers. So let's grab some more seam binding. This is fun. Thanks for crafting along with me, guys. Okay, I'm just going to fold my seam binding in half. It's about, it's more than a yard. So I'm just going to wrap it once, twice. I can't read comments and do this at the same time. Once, twice, hold that with your thumb. For those of you that do little girl's hair, you know what a topsy is, right? So let me back this up. So leave your towels once, twice. Then I hold that with my thumb and bring it through the center of your fingers over, and then we're just going to tie it. Slide it off, center your knot, and then hold it and just pull your knot. Oh, yeah, we have the charms that match. I have those sitting right here that are just adorable, so we'll probably use some of those, too. Thanks for reminding me, Tanya. And let's bring our bows out. Bring that down. And let's just fluff it up. So I have... Um, four on each side because I doubled it. So if you have the seam binding also maybe in a green, two different colors looks really cool. Okay, we have another layer here. There we go. It doesn't want to come out. When I'm too lazy to get my bow maker out or it's buried, <laughs> Pam, that's what I do. Once we glue it down, so we get some flowers here, which I'm not going to totally put this down because I don't know. To be honest with you, I need to play with it just a little bit. So I'm just going to lay them there just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm wanting to do. And then, of course, you've got your cut aparts. I actually do need the other half of this because I want to put masquerade and see what I did is I cut it off and I don't have another collection here with me but the masquerade ticket it says admit one is actually what's going to go across the front here yeah and then again let's pull these out so these are available in the store and they were they're made to go they match this collection so well look at this so I definitely definitely want to hang some off some twine like I said, because this is going to be, this is an actual gift. And Sandy Trefficker today just posted a video on making 
a dangle with charms. So you're going to want to watch Sandy's video. So, oh, that's really, you know, that's really cute, actually. But I want them to be able to take it off and reuse it. So, oh, let's try this really quick. I've got some black twine. Let's grab that. So the black twine is available also in the store by the yard, which is nice because it's very thin and it's going to hold your, it, it goes through the holes of our, so I did get a lot. I probably have, I grabbed five yards off that spool, but it's only like, I think in the store, what, it's 25 cents a yard or something. So I'm going to bring it up. We're just going to cross it over, bring it in again. See how cute this would be to give to a teacher or co-worker. So I'm going to tie it in a knot over here. Make that smaller. Um, no, it wouldn't be too heavy, but that ribbon, it's kind of on the seam binding. It's a booger to get it through. So I'm going to use this. And they're just adorable. They're the enamel. Oh, the black twine's not on the website? Well, we'll get it on. So I've got the pumpkin, the bat on one side. I'm going to put the witch's hat on the other. Or the, it's not really, it's kind of a witch's hat, huh? We need the ghost. And um, I'm going to put, you know what, I'm going to put them all on here. Just because they're so cute and a ghost. Um, okay, the black twine will be on right after. I don't know why it's not on. Okay, we'll make sure we secure that. I'm not keeping that as a bow. So what I'm going to do is bring these all up, cut them. See, and that way it looks like a spider. <laughs> but isn't that cute? So as this is going to be, like I said, more of a gift, um, that will that will be really cute to give. And then they've got the charms, they've got the candy bar, and I will go through and figure out exactly what I want to do to decorate. Because like I said, I've got to have that masquerade ticket. And you can see it better on the website, that masquerade ticket. And... Uh, Actually, Heather, I have your Christmas book. I got to get sent to you. I just have to mat a few more pages still. This year has gone by so fast. I have not forgotten it. Okay, so maybe we will just have maybe one flower. I'll go through and see. So anyway, there is a really quick would have been a lot quicker but we spent a lot of time talking but we talked and we did all of this in an hour so if you also go back and watch this you'll get to see the Sandra's little helper and you'll get to see the project we're starting next week and we have lots of stuff planned for you guys to do and not only the album but we've got um a lot of fun boxes more things to make cards so that you can use them for your holiday gift giving. And so see again, you could go ahead and mount the sides, but I like it just plain like that. It looks like there's a box on the inside, which there is. Oh, and here are the domes. So the shaker domes that I'm gonna be using on this project that we start next week. Um, these are fun. You get, they're three and a half by three and a half. You get four in a package, super easy to use anyway this is going to be going on the front and we're going to have shakers so if you don't if you're not 
a person <laughs> that likes to make the shaker pieces and parts. Uh, this is such an easy way. And once it's down, then we decorate around the edge of it. And I'm, it's going to be smaller, but I am remaking the album that um, was requested because I never did a tutorial on it many years ago. So you might want to grab some of these. And again, the Prima flowers, I will be using definitely with our tutorial because they do go so good. Can the, can these go in the mail? Yeah, they're in the store. We ship these out. They're the Sizzix domes. We also have the Christmas trees. And Tanya just posted the link. So you get four of them and you can use them for more than one project. And then just go to the shaker stuff and pick out your shakers. I'm going to use a purple. There's a purple one and I'll just mix a couple of colors and then I'll be using the um, our own. This is our very own Mystic Midnight. It's the glitter and it's glass glitter. So this is beautiful in shakers. You can see how shiny it is because it's actual ground up German glass, um, wine bottles, all that kind of stuff. But we made our own mix for Midnight Hour. Look at this. It's so pretty, you guys. So this jar too. I've already used a ton of it and you wouldn't even know it. You can use it on so many things. So you'll want to grab that. It's called the Myth Mystical Midnight. And then if you don't want as much orange, you can still get, I still have some of the True Grit left. Again, these are our own mixtures. This doesn't have orange in it. It has more of your silvers. Looks beautiful in this too. Um, again, I've used tons. You wouldn't even know it. Yes, craft herpes. There you go. Because once you take them out of here, they are everywhere. But you can see the difference in colors from True Grit and uh, Mystical Midnight. So those are our own mixes. So grab those. You're going to want those, some of the flowers and the domes if you're going to follow along with the tutorial. And the paper will be in stock soon. Now, don't worry. We're not going to start matting. Yeah, that is the perfect. Tanya just put up one that's perfect for this shaker. Okay. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you next Thursday. Um, yep, I've got it on the calendar. Next Thursday, I'll be live. We'll be working on that. And I hope you guys enjoyed making your, your candy bar holder for Halloween. Makes a really nice gift. So I will see you again next week. And the black twine will be up in just a few minutes. And I apologize. I didn't know it wasn't on the website. We have tons of it. Thanks, everybody. And have a wonderful weekend. And I hope you guys are all crafting and making all your boxes. Bye-bye.